Why does this babe run? Run after this nigga outside the club. Run. Like, first of all, why are you running after a nigga? Let's start there. The Next Door Podcast. Welcome back to the Next Door Podcast. I am Bestie Next Door, and I'm like your bestie next door. If you like your tea to be extra, extra sweet, then this place is not for you because we like our tea to be sweet and bitter. Sweet enough that it goes down, bitter enough to wake us up. Guys, we back outside. Back outside. We're back outside. Back you outside. know what time it is when this comes out. So, guys, today I have my first guest, Ada O. She is a radio personnel. And she's going to be here with me. We're going to do our little bestie cocktail and have a conversation. Like, we, we got to get to know you. Ada, talk to them. Who are yeah, you? Like, I don't want it to be too cliche and yeah, too, and you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I'm going to take my earring out because clearly it doesn't want to stay. Uh, hey y'all, my name is Ada Ada O. I'm a radio and television presenter from Toronto, Canada. From the six, no one calls it the six, but I'm just gonna say. That. <laughs> um, yeah, and I just be doing my thing. I'm a content creator as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm Bestie's friend. Yes, right? yes, and I'm so excited to have her. She's the first guest. You guys know I was looking to get more people on just so you guys can hear different personality and different opinions. So now she's the first person that's actually gonna try this cocktail with me on camera some of you guys already tried it on your own but we're gonna get her review as well and then we're gonna get into our conversation so without further ado let's crack it open let's get into it so right. what do i have to do um ice all right Ryan, i don't know how much ice you like but i'm extra icy type of girl okay, I'll take some ice. um and just to show you that i'm so, so much on demon time i bought us our own individual bottles small small um crack it open oh Okay, it's tomorrow for you. <laughs> now it depends on how much alcohol you like in, in it, but me, I like a full, you know, I'm a champ in this. And I hope. Oh, okay, all right. Then the Red Bull. So it's just honey and Red Bull? That's it. And what's the name of this cocktail? I just call it like a Bessie cocktail. Bessie cocktail? It's, just, it's just amazing. So you, know, you know what, Wild Turkey? You guys need to li literally sponsor me for this particular brand of whiskey you guys have because at this point, you need yeah. some urban touch to it. You know what I'm saying? The girlies need it. Because <laughs> we can't be drinking Hennessy and passing out. And Hennessy? Yeah. Hennessy is so like... It's 2016. Right? No, but people, some people still drink Hennessy. Hennessy? Exactly. If you still drink Hennessy in 2024, God save you. Cheers. Cheers, honey. What you think? Mm -hmm. I told you! I told you! I I'm telling you, it's addictive. It's addictive. It doesn't taste like alcohol. It doesn't. I'm telling you, it doesn't have an alcohol taste at all. That's what I love about it the most. It's kind of like one of those like uh refreshing kind of like smooth mm, but okay, i can see this catching up to me yeah it does it does mm. it does it does damn okay mm -hmm. all right so guys now 2024 we're back on our our, our american honey and mm -hmm. red bull so ada yeah let's get into this conversation mm -hmm. so me and her we're actually friends in real life it's not just internet yeah it's yeah. not internet stuff mm -hmm. um so we decided to talk about should you date if you're broke mm. and a lot of people have different opinions about this particular topic, especially men. Because yeah. men are usually the ones that have an issue with when it comes to money. Because mm -hmm. their confidence is at the utmost lowest mm -hmm. when they have no money. And these men that don't have money, they're always in my comment section insulting me because of the things I say about a man being financially stable before dating. Right. What's your opinion about that as far as like a man being financially stable or a woman dating while she's broke? Like, Let's just get right. into that conversation. Okay. Um, okay, in regards to a man, I definitely don't think you should be dating if you're broke. Um, either or, really, man or woman. Like, I've dated my fair share of broke men. I have died. It, it, it was a story it, it time. Hasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't pleasant because broke men are the meanest. Broke men are the biggest gaslighters. For real. Broke men, like, they're frustrated with themselves, so they take it out on you, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm, yeah. My most recent not financially stable partner was so sweet in the beginning, but once I started asking for certain things and, have, and like really just setting my boundaries and standards, 
it just became like, oh, you're too much. Oh, you're stressing me. Really? Oh, yeah. And it was just like, bro, I'm asking for the bare minimum. I'm asking, I'm <laughs> I'm asking you for no. I'm literally you know, bro, you. No, no, no. It was like, I asked him to like pay for my Uber to his place. I asked him to pay for tacos. That's what broke us up. Because there, there was one night he went out. Oh, no. And he went out with his colleagues. I was like, babe, can you pay me about, can you pay me about some tacos? Let's make a, can I say it? You can say whatever you want oh, to say. Okay. It brought me back. Um, what's octopus? What's the name? Oh, um, calamari. No, it wasn't calamari. Oh, it was, it was, it was actual octopus. Um, cooked? No, it, it's cooked. Oh. It was like some freaking octopus dish. Whatever. I, Isha yeah. brought me back octopus. Me, I don't like octopus too. I don't like. I don't like calamari. Wait, I don't like any of that. Wait, thing. did he bring it back thinking that because it's it kind of gives off that expensive feel? That's why he bought it for Bro, you. Bro, it was even food he was eating. I he, uh, he, he packed it like a bird. Bro, uh. he packed it, and I'm like, I did not ask. For octopus, I don't even like octopus. Oh, you don't like octopus? I hate octopus, so I'm like, why you would don't you like calamari? No, oh. so I'm like, why would you bring this back to me? I literally asked you for tacos, bro. I asked you for tacos, and you brought me back freaking octopus. So I was pissed. Um, oh. and what he said, and that's how we got into a fight. And that night we broke up. Wait, so what was his response to you saying that? Was he saying that you're ungrateful and this and that? Yeah, no, so pretty much I was super hungry, right? Like I was starving. I was just coming back from like a, a parade. Mm -hmm. It was like pride. So I was coming back to this place. I was like, babe, can you like pick me up? Can you bring me back some food where you're at? And he's like, all right, no problem. I asked for tacos specifically. And then I came in. No freaking tacos to be found. Um, I saw octopus. But like I even knew like my own... On my own volition, I went to go buy myself Chipotle. <laughs> because you knew because that. Because I knew I was going to be disappointed. <laughs> because you knew I was going to be disappointed. Like, I was pissed. Like, I was so angry. I was just like, this nigga's not going to fucking do shit. So let me just carry my Chipotle. And with my Chipotle, I was just like, hey, see, I already bought this because I knew you weren't going to do shit. Why do I have to always spell shit out for you? Why do I have to... And I went off. And then we got into a whole fight about friggin' tacos, Chipotle, and octopus that night. And then the next morning, he was just like, you know... Seeing as how I can't give you what you want and what I, I'm giving you, your calling is the bare minimum. Let's just end it. He broke up with me! How could he break up with Bro, you? Bro, I was, I wasn't even pissed me off. I wasn't even pissed me off more because I was just like, yeah, you know, I, yeah, I was breaking up with you. I was already done with you, yeah, but I was that. with you because I really fucked with you. But because you don't fuck with yourself so bad because I asked for the bare minimum, how much is how much is tacos? How much is tacos? Like what? But I think my Chipotle costs more than the damn tacos. No, you see, the, the I think my Chipotle taste costs more than the damn tacos. The disrespect. So. You know what I think? Do this is why I want to know. Do you think both men deserve cat? Do they deserve Brown, cat? Broke women, yes. Oh. So now let's move on to women because you asked me about both men and women, right? Yeah. So. That makes sense. That actually makes sense. Yeah. Don't come to a rich babe thinking that she needs to lower her standards just to date you because you don't have money. Because I, I noticed this thing. When a, a man can't afford a woman, automatically she's a gold digger. She's a slut. Okay, so I think there's also levels to brokenness with women. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's levels to brokenness. You could be broke. You could not have money in your account, but still have access to certain resources, still be able to do your nails. And that's the thing. We could be broke. We'll still do our nails. We'll still do our hair. We'll, we'll still, still go out for we'll free. We'll still upkeep. We'll still go out for free. We'll still eat food. We'll still do things that we don't have to pay for that won't come out of our pocket. Do you get? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, there's levels to it. Then there's like, okay... There's that type of broke, and then there's just like dead broke. You can't keep up with like if, if you're so broke that you can't take care of yourself and can't keep up with yourself, definitely don't date mama. Definitely level up, get the barest minimum done for yourself. Take make yourself feel more confident. Make yourself like take care of yourself to the point where it's like you internally exude this confidence, confidence and energy yes. you know what i mean yeah, yeah. then you'll start attracting the type of men that, that you, you mm -hmm, desire mm -hmm. but if you can't do the bare minimum i.e keep up with yourself then um yeah just but let's just say this let's yourself. just say this there's no reason why you should be that level of broke as a woman as a if woman. you have a cat because there's always somebody willing to pay for something there's always see let me tell you something let me tell you the truth let me tell you the truth. I'm not saying you should prostitute. I'm not saying you should be a prostitute. Mm. But I just feel like, even if you don't have money to do your nails, like, 
there's so many different ways for you to still get your nails done. Like all those like press-ons press -ons, from yeah. like CVS. That's like five dollars, ten dollars. It's all about packaging. And Package. I keep telling these girls, it's huge. You can have zero in your account. But if mm -hmm. you go out with you go out now, you just package yourself, you put on little press-on nails, you watch YouTube videos. You should be a DIY queen. Is yeah, it DIY? Or DIY. Yeah, DIY queen. Mm -hmm. Do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Just so that you can package yourself so you can see the man that you want that's going to bring you to that next level. However, mm -hmm. I do agree with what you're saying because you know what? The funny thing is this too sometimes. When you're a broke girl and you're dating rich men, you kind of date from a, a place of lack. So yeah. every little thing they do, it's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And it could be, literally be the bare minimum. Like, mm -hmm. for example... A rich guy will give a girl, like you mentioned, being confident, exuding that mm -hmm. energy. He may give that babe $10,000, but he'll give you five hundred mm -hmm. because he knows that you're, you're coming not. from a place of lack. Yeah. Like, everything is like, oh, no, I got to go see my rich man. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know because I don't want to lose him. Mm -hmm. So you have a point. It's also you. It's also a mental a thing. Mental, mostly. Yeah, yeah, it's mostly a mental thing as well, you know? 100%. 100%. I think that's part of, like, womanhood, too, and just, like, growing up and just the transition from young woman to, like, ah, ah. <laughs> Bestie. Yeah, I'm a child. I'm a child. Catch up. Catch up. Guys, I'm telling you, this combination is, like, a summertime combination for the ladies. It's mm -hmm. not too harsh. It's very smooth. It gives you that. It doesn't make you passed out drunk you're not gonna be like drunk passed out throwing up you know your your friend has to hold your hair back because you're throwing up in the toilet it gives you that kind of like oh i'm about to go see my man like, i feel like i should pour more but like we actually we poured exactly about the same yeah okay yeah i just thought kind of growing up is like understanding that you need to decenter men ultimately what do you mean? Like, I feel like as a young woman, you do need to dissenter men. Like, men can't be your source of happiness, joy, mm -hmm. um, even just financial freedom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like a weird dance. It's like a, it's mm -hmm. like a mental mm -hmm. game. I feel like we play. Shut that your freaking mouth. I'm coming. Go away. <laughs> Poor bougie. Um, yeah, like I feel like growing up is learning how to like decenter men for like your happiness and understanding like what men are like for, like what they're good for. Yeah, I think that um if that makes any sense. Yeah, I agree with you. Not to like objectify them, but like Yeah, what do you oh yeah, I think I, I think you need to understand like your role as a woman and then their role as a man. How women think and how men, how women think and operate, how men think and operate, and like understand like the differences and the commonalities and like mm -hmm. just how it could just like blend and work together. Because we're like such different species. We you no, know, we really are. We're just such different genders. Mm -hmm. We operate so differently, and I feel like as young women, we're taught to like romanticize love and have that fairy tale happy ever ending whatever and it's just like that's just not what real, real life is and that's honestly not gonna get you far it's not all. Yeah. yeah you know what i also understood like i understand too about dating and just me being in a relationship and you know just dating in general i feel like when you put your happiness around a man is when you become the most depressed mm -hmm. because you should be able to make yourself happy outside of your relationship. And I think that a lot of women misunderstand that. And that's why women take breakups so hard and mm -hmm. men don't take it as hard. Mm -hmm. Unless you betray them. Mm -hmm. The only way a man will take a breakup hard is if you betray him. Like you mm -hmm. cheat on him or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But as far as like, let's say you just say, okay, you know, it's not working. Mm -hmm. Women tend to take it more harder than men because we, it's like they... I want to say, women, we just try to put our happiness around a man. Like, you know, like, oh, he's supposed to take me out. Or, oh, he's supposed to do this. But I feel like when you're in a relationship, you shouldn't... You, you should have your own thing. You should have your own thing going on. Like, just mm -hmm. still be happy mm -hmm. no matter what with mm -hmm. your friends. And I think that's another important thing we need to talk about is mm -hmm. when, when you start dating and when you get into a relationship, I feel like most times, and it's not we do it on purpose, but we women end up losing some friends because of our relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, we're like, you know what? No, I want to stay in. No, mm -hmm. no, bitch. Mm -hmm. Because when his friends call, he's not saying, oh, no, I'm going to just hang out with my babe. No, he's going to be like, oh, yeah, let me go out and hang out with my boys. Because mm -hmm. he needs that balance. And I feel yeah. like we women forget balance exactly 100%. yeah now where i'm at in my life my girls that have or that are in relationships i don't even sometimes i even forget their relationships not because that they're acting a fool or they're <laughs> acting a mess but they do such a good job at 
establishing that balance, you know? Yeah. And it's because they've worked on themselves and they've done the work to have an identity outside of their man mm -hmm. and their, their relationship that it doesn't com like consume them and become their entire identity. Don't get me wrong. When it's time to be with babe, when it's time to be with their man, mm -hmm. yeah, the way, babe, you know what? No, not right now. I'm with da 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 yeah, yeah. Cool, whatever. Yeah. And then that respect is established and it's there. But like, when I'm with them and it's just one-on-one -on -one time, it's not like, oh, we're talking about men or we're talking about their relationship all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, th I, I don't like that. I feel like it's kind of, like, personally me, like, on a personal tip, most of the time, I try not to make it, like, if I, I hate, let me say this, I hate when, like, let's say, for example, I'm with a friend and I want it to be about us and just let it just be about something else and just talk, use the whole entire time mm -hmm. talking about, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, he did me like this, he did me like that. It's mm -hmm. like, girl. We could sit here and talk about problems, or we're gonna sit here and turn up. What, what, what we gonna do? What we gonna do? <laughs> what is given? Because I'm not about to sit here and be telling you about relationship problems. Your, I don't care. We're here to turn up. If you're not turning up, I don't wanna talk. I'm sorry. Like, that's just, I feel like balance is so, so mm -hmm. important. And you guys gotta understand that. Like, I also think sisterhood and womanhood is like really important as well. Yeah. Like, actually having like quality female friendships relationships that mm. like uplift you that mm -hmm. support you that are just like true genuine that feel good like you don't even have to question is something that i don't think we're taught or like focus enough about mm -hmm. you know we're, we're always like not we but like women mm -hmm. are like taught to like be in competition with their friends Ooh, and stuff like that you women, are, women are taught to like just be jealous and like trying one up one up well mm, her body isn't done, or her hair ain't laid, or her hair, she's not in bone straight, or her whatever. Oh, let's she's talk about like, this. I, I don't want to cut you mm -hmm. off. I want to say this, because I think this is so, you just brought the idea to my head. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because of the American honey. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is. I'm already feeling a little mm -hmm. loose in the, in the lips. <laughs> but do you think that nowadays you should be friends with people mm -hmm. in on your level? My like, level. do you do you feel like it's like a, like a aesthetic type of, I, I have a lot to say about this, but I want to hear your opinion. Like, do you think that it's appropriate for you to be friends well, with right someone on your level? Because you know why? You mentioned something about jealousy, and mm -hmm. the only way you can be jealous of someone is if you don't have what they have. Yeah. So, do you think women should be friends with other women that are on their level, or they should be friends with women that are above their level, just so they can feel like they need to upgrade? This is how I think it should be. I think... I think you need to keep around quality people in your life, period. Mm -hmm. I'm not an aesthetics person. I'm not like, oh, she's not cute, so she can hang out with me or whatever. I'm mm -hmm. about, like, what's in your heart? You mm -hmm. know? How do we relate? How do we connect? That, mm -hmm. That's how we could be friends. Ultimately, I'm so glad, and, you know, all my friends are beautiful. Like, I, I can't say any of my girls are ugly. No, all my <laughs> girls are bad. Um, all the people that I keep around me are like literally the best people that I've ever had around in my life at this point. But it took me like trials and tribulations and like friendship breakups to like get to this place where I'm able to have that like discernment mm -hmm. when it comes to like friends and women and just like people around me. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say be friends with people who are on your level, but that's not just aesthetics, that mm. is mental emotional, spiritual, mm -hmm. do you get, mm -hmm. you know, once you're able to like, like pour into each other, once you're equally yoked, mm -hmm. that's when your relationship will really thrive. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's in friendship, yeah. that's in relationship, that's in anything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 100% be friends with people on your level. Yeah, I think um, personally, <clears throat> I think that um, that's what creates jealousy. When I think of, when thinking about it, it creates kind of some jealousy when, like let's say you're the type of girl that, don't have certain things mm -hmm. and I, I you know what it's crazy because i don't know i'm personally different i like to have people around me that have more because it motivates me mm -hmm. but it all depends on you it all depends on your confidence it's mm -hmm. like it, are you confident in yourself to know to that hold it down, uh, to hold it down while you're around these people right yeah, that's what it be weird yeah and not be and weird not, yeah. right because most of the time some girls they literally go off the girls that are on higher levels and just be around them just to be jealous and just to have that like i don't know how to explain it no 100 yeah. percent. right so sometimes <clears throat> it's like an equal balance because it's like yeah you need to be with you need to have friends on your mm -hmm. level but mm -hmm. at the same time it's like okay the friend on your level and aspiring exactly there mm -hmm. we go 
She took it right on my chest. On your level and aspiring for more. Exactly. Like, like equally on that, like, path. Oh, you know? we're going and up. Even, even if you're not, it's like, you should be able to, like, help a girl be like, you know what, babe? Like, this is what we need to do. This is where we need to be at. So let's, like, do this so we both can, can get yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've never experienced a friendship where I personally have been jealous of someone. Yeah. I, like, Never like that's just because we're Capricorns. Because you know Capricorns, we don't be. We're more motivated. Like yeah, yeah. I need to get. I need to step my cookies up. You know what I'm saying? We don't be like, oh, I'm hating that bitch. No, yeah, no. no, I personally have never, but I have experienced one relationship where I was just like. Why do I feel not confident around this person? Why do mm-hmm. I feel not I like, like the humbleness? I yeah, like the, no, yeah. It, it's honest, it's mm-hmm. honest, and I've I've kind of like been transparent with this person mm-hmm. about it. But like, why do I feel like somehow like oh maybe like she doesn't fuck with me type of thing? And how did she receive that when you said that to her? Did she respect like oh I like your transparency or she was like oh, yeah I no no she 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 appreciated it and like funny enough she even like checked me she was like I was actually kind of sometimes about you because of xyz whatever mm-hmm. so once we were able to like get over that like hump of like okay this is what was in our heads and this is like we just laid it out mm-hmm. like we were able to move past it yeah. and that's what i feel like is a healthy friendship once you're mm-hmm. able to have these like difficult conversations like those like uncomfortable like conversations but it's like real honest mm-hmm. and like everyone could like move forward from that then it's like okay yeah that's maybe a friendship that could like actually stand the test of time and stand whatever like yeah you know what i mean um but yeah no i've never personally like been jealous of a friend yeah That's i want to say something about Ada, and i want to say something about just friendship in general what i realized because um mo- like originally i'm from brooklyn new york you guys know the story already i can't i don't want to keep saying this you guys know it already <laughs> um and what i realized is this i feel like people who've known you for a very long and it's not everybody i don't want to say every single person i know you for a long time it's this but i feel like people who've known you for a long time when i say a long time i'm talking about like maybe like high school junior high school mm-hmm. i'm talking about that right and you know we all have that glow up but people who've known you from that period of your life no matter how much they try to accept this new version of who you are they still somehow keep like have this idea of who uh, you used to, used to be and where you came from exactly and, and, and i think that they can't accept mm-hmm. that you've grown up and mm-hmm. one thing that i love about like when it comes to friendships is i'm, I'm not really as i don't know how to say i don't want to say i'm not friendly that's not the word but i don't let a lot of people in as like, welcoming I'm, yeah i'm mm-hmm. not yeah i don't let a lot of people into my personal life mm-hmm. but one thing that i've noticed is this that people who meet you in a particular stage. time particular stage in your life accepts you for who you are at that stage and they want to see you grow i don't know if that makes sense like they want they kind of want to see they, they they're like so excited like oh my god i remember when you just mm-hmm. oh i remember well, that's, they're, it's like they're cheering you mm-hmm. on as opposed to someone who, who known you from mm-hmm. since you were like junior A high child, school yeah you were awkward is it just me or you were depressed yeah yeah no 100 percent. i think that's like with everyone I, i'm so happy i cut all the girls i, I grew up with mm-hmm. off like mm-hmm. quick as soon as i enter. how do you cut them off because they feel so Oh, I just stopped talking to them, and then when I moved to where we live now, and I didn't tell them, they blocked me because I didn't Why? tell them. Why Isn't that they... weird? Blocked me, mm-hmm. but it's just like I didn't tell you bitches in the first place because you're fucking weird. Yeah, that's weird. like. But why would they block you because of that? That's because they felt so entitled to me and my life and who I am and the direction and my identity, and they couldn't accept that I was just moving on past that past where we came from I'm but no how that. i want to ask you a question because I, I think that this is kind of like correlating indirectly mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. this is like indirectly <clears throat> advice i want to mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. so like let's say for example you mentioned you guys not talking so how would it be like do you give them the access to be able to say oh Ada, how are you doing do you are you do you block oh, them zero. completely from social media your number uh, or you don't even give them the access to be able to say oh what's going on because i feel like like i just feel like sometimes it almost seems like, you know, when, like, it's almost like relationships. Like, when you're familiar, you're mm-hmm. comfortable. Mm-hmm. So, you you know, when you go back home, it's like, mm-hmm. these people know me already. Yeah, I want to yeah, be around them. Mm-hmm. But even though you know, mm-hmm. they're looking at your side, like, wow, mm-hmm. you, you look, you know, mm-hmm. they, they're hoping mm-hmm. that that move would have did you wrong, but mm-hmm. it didn't do you mm-hmm. wrong. And they're like, they're looking at you like, damn, you're a little bit too advanced mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. They're not saying it, yeah. but you can feel it. Yeah. How do you navigate that? Yeah, how do you kind of like, all right, well, 
it's not that I think I'm better than you, but we just don't align anymore. Yeah. How do you kind of like separate that? Like, well, I mean, we, I love you, but mm -hmm. yeah. Well, definitely not in communication anymore. I could tell you that. Mm -hmm. Um, they a couple of them still follow me, and I love them too. Like, watch me, watch me glow. Like, I look mm -hmm. fucking great, bitch. Like, right. <laughs> you know, like I we don't talk. There's no room for that. Not mm -hmm. even a happy birthday. Yeah. What? I take birthday serious. Yeah, not even happy I'm, birthday. I'm square it's for okay, birthday, yeah, I don't say happy birthday to them. I yeah, I don't give a fuck, bitch. Like, keep watching. Like, it's cool. I've muted them. I mm -hmm. definitely have muted them. I've restricted yeah. them. I don't, like, see their shit. But, like, there's one in particular babe that, like, watches my shit, like, religiously, all my stories and stuff like that. Yeah. And then there's even one of them that now tried, that, yeah, tried to revert back to me. How? And, like, hey, girl, like, we should catch up. Like, bitch. we should do. Yeah. No, no, no. I gave her time. I actually said, because, like, she wasn't, like, the worst of them. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She wasn't the worst of them. But, like, I, I sat down and I had lunch with her, and she gave me, ran me all their jizz, what the bitches were saying about me, mm -hmm. when they mocked me, when I moved. Uh -huh. they, yeah, they told me all this shit, and I was just like, yeah, thank God. That's why you bitches are not my friends anymore. Fuck you. Kick rocks, bitch. Yeah, I hope you've seen this, because she's telling yeah. you kick rocks. Kick rocks. Um, I think, you know, all right, I feel like it's funny how you say this, because, you know, and I think this is a perfect time for us to talk about this, because... Mm -hmm. I have, okay, in real life, you see how online, guys, how I talk to you guys and how I be saying stuff and I be too blunt? I'm actually really like, real, I'm really like that in real life. Like, I have a way of saying things that I don't mean to be too tough, but it just comes off like that because I be like, it, it gets to a point where I'm already over the conversation. Like, you know what, bitch, you're supposed to do this and you're not doing it. And if you don't want to do it, this is what's going to happen. So, a recent, something happened with one of my friends, right? And um, I think, I, now that I think about it, because me and you had talked about this, mm -hmm. and you mentioned to me about my tone. Mm -hmm. I need to watch my tone, because mm -hmm. I feel like the way I would want someone to, like, put me straight, I always think people would want to receive that Receive well. it. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned something that's so important, and I think that this is something that a lot of people need to understand. Sometimes when you want to say something to someone, and they're not ready to receive it. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes as friends, I don't know if anyone, maybe some of you or maybe some of you may be going through this with a friend where you may have said something and you don't realize that you hurt their feelings. And you may be feeling like, why is this bitch not talking to me? Mm -hmm. But it could really be because you had said something that's so, and you mentioned this to me because me and our dad had this period where we weren't really saying much to each other. And it was because of my tone. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to understand that. I want you guys to, not. Nah, I'm trying to. I want you guys to understand that tone really matters when you're trying to communicate with someone. Right, because the way you would receive something is not the same way someone will receive something mm -hmm. and I'm I'm starting to as I tell you guys a lot of things I'm also learning as well mm -hmm. and I want you guys to understand that don't think that someone thinks like you mm -hmm. especially when it comes to friends like mm -hmm. we're talking about dating but it's all relationships mm -hmm. because even friends is also a relationship mm -hmm. as well you get what I'm saying mm -hmm. so try to be very easy with your tone when you mm -hmm. say certain things and like try to understand that even though you may want you may see something good for your friend mm -hmm. But not if everyone she, has the same mind that you have. Right. And if she's not ready to receive it, she's not ready to receive it. And you gotta be okay. It's okay. Like, don't feel like, oh my God, this bitch, fuck this bitch. No. And we're Capricorns. Mm -hmm. Technically, we're twins. Yeah, we're, right, right. We have the same mind. Yeah, right. We, we do, we do. We have the same mind. But she's so. uh, January 6th. No, January 5th. And I'm 7th. Seven. Seven. Yeah, so it's so funny because, like, literally, I'm like, you know what? I got X, Y, Z, 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 period. Mm -hmm. She's like, wait, hold on, bitch. <laughs> what you mean the Z, Z, Z? Because the Z, Z, Z is not. I'm like, you know what? Z. End. <laughs> that was it. And, and then, I needed that. I needed to marinate in that. Yeah. I needed time to pass. I needed to like ex actually experience life and grow. Not like we fell off. No, no, like, no. It no. wasn't like no. But it's just mm -hmm. like I needed to understand where her mind was at, and I didn't get there for a couple months after. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So it's just like. Yeah, not everyone has the same mind as you, but, like, ultimately, if you actually have, like, a quality friend that, like, you appreciate, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. just Good know, word. like, your friends hopefully don't want bad for you, and they're always going to mm -hmm. tell you what is actually, like, best for you, you know? How do you know a friend of me? Mm. I'll give you guys a sign. I want to hear her signs to see if it's, like, similar. A friend of me is someone who is just, like, real short. Like, maybe they'll, like... Really? Like, Ugh. like people have done that to me in person, and really? like it's fucking scary. Yeah, like they'll like laugh, and then they'll be like, it'll be like real short, like it's real fake. Or like you tell them like good news. This is when I knew that one bitch that watches my story religiously was my friend. I told her something. One accolade happened to me like this, 
and she just completely changed the conversation after I told her. Like, didn't mm-hmm. not oh that's so great, girl, that's so good, whatever. Like, completely move, like shift, mm-hmm. bitch, shift. Yeah. So mm, no. that was a telling sign. And then also too, like friends that don't like communicate properly. Like today, I was late. She thought I wasn't gonna show up. Oh yeah, that's if I wasn't girl. gonna I was show bad. up, girl, I, I would was, tell you I'm not gonna show up. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, finishing my makeup. Yeah, I was well, this bad. girl she goes to sleep at six p.m. I do, I do. So, <laughs> I do because I wasn't so early. My day starts at six a.m. Every single. I don't even miss that six a.m. I must pray. I have to walk the dog. I have to go to the gym. My day starts so early yeah. that I thought that she. I was like, she's not coming. Let me go but, see. Wig off. Everything <laughs> off. Go now, ahead, friends that don't communicate, like. And it could be like the most simplest things, you know. Like mm-hmm. it, I don't, I don't fear bestie. Mm-hmm. Like I would tell her, but I, like I can't make it. Yeah, right. But like, yeah, it could be like anything. Mm-hmm. Not even just like, oh, I'm running late, but just like, hey, I didn't like this or whatever. Especially the hey, I didn't like this because those are the type of things that will harbor, internalize, hold on to whatever anger that mm-hmm. they are yeah. upset about you for, and then all of a sudden it will just come out one oh! night. You're a fucking bitch. You're oh! this. You're you have to tell that. Sorry. What's the nickname we're gonna give this person? Lucifer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, okay. Let's say, uh, let's say um, Eve. No, no, that's that's, that's too, too obvious. Yeah, is it too obvious? Mm-hmm. It rhymes. Mm-mm. Okay, okay. No, I was saying because Adam and Eve. You know she ate the forbidden fruit, but I'm dude, that's too much. That's just too much. Um, let's call her. I gotta reload my drink because this girl, they're gonna be like, oh word, this shit. When she told me this story, okay, fine, let's call her Eve. Eve, all right. Okay, let's my call mouth her. dropped to the my mouth dropped to the ground when she told me about this particular story, and I want her to share with you guys because it's so important. But I doubt the floor is yours. Let's call her Eve. So me and Eve are friends, right? And. See, the thing is, Eve has a real bad, wicked attitude. And I've seen this with other people. I've seen her distribute this poor behavior with other people. Because me, I personally haven't experienced it. I gave her benefit of the doubt. And that's my fault. Mm-hmm. I take accountability for that. Mm-hmm. I'm the type of person that always gives benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt till it does not benefit you anymore. Ah. And this is what happened. Mm-hmm. This is when it didn't benefit me. <clears throat> So she has a real nasty behavior, real nasty behavior. She's very short tempered, lashes out on people, just ugly, not cute. But she never did it with me until this ungrateful night. So shut your freaking mouth. We lived in the same area and I moved back to Toronto, my hometown. Mm -hmm. And it was my last night and I got all my girls and I said, we're going out. So we went out to the club, right? So we go out to the club, fun night, we're all drinking, da da She also came a little late. She didn't come with like the main group of us. Like she just like met us there type of thing. But she was just kind of like, mm. like in Posh. The yeah, yeah, like real like stush, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I didn't think anything. how many of it was. How many? It was of like us? four or five of us. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> My body was going down. Yeah, I mean, I didn't catch up. Mm-hmm. Mm. Honey, so. There was a guy that came into the club and she was talking to this guy. Now, mind you, we were just at this nigga's house a couple days ago. We're all hanging out at his house, okay? Drinking, chilling, vibes, whatever. So I was like, oh, there's homeboy. Like, go say hi to him. She's like, mm, no, like, I'm going to wait for him to come here. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't want to go, like, say hi to him. And I was like, I need her. I'm like, girl, go say hi to him. Go tell him to buy his bottle. Go tell him to, like, girl, go say hi to that nigga. Like, do you get it? You need the bottle to keep like, coming. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> Eventually, he comes over, and I'm like, hey. Like, I'm all like, hey. Mm-hmm. Like, he's mm-hmm. here. Say hi. She, him and her, obviously, clearly are beat. Like, she didn't update me on whatever the fuck was going on between mm-hmm. them. Because when I tell you we were at this nigga's house, like, two days ago. So, like. Everything was all cool. Yeah. That club is over. There's like a after hours spot right behind the club. Oh, so she's like, okay, let's go to the after hours spot. Like I got us a table. So I'm like, all right, bet party continues. We move. So we go to the next 
after hours spot and it's literally right around the corner we, we just walk there it's just a hop skip jump mm -hmm. over so we walk in there and one thing i don't like doing is embarrassment i don't like pulling up to a place and there's no table there's no like anything situated like you're the one that told us to come here because there was a table right we walk in there all four or five of us bro standing like bread at the door i'm oh, like no i'm like babe where's the table where's the table she's like looking around looking around see look as a, classy babes we don't we don't go standing by the bar looking like prostitutes. Can I get a hello? Hello. We, if you have a table, if you don't have a table, I'm not coming. Mm -hmm. Period. Right. So we get to the table. Now the table that I feel like we forced ourselves in, to be honest, because she was squishing her way, moving her way into the place, into the spot. And the table right beside us just so happened to be the guy's table. Mm -hmm. The guy that we just saw at the first place, right? And he's there with the next babe. So as she gets into this table, she like shoulders ah, the babe. Ah, and they go back and forth. What the fuck? You just broke my shoulder. Da, da, da. You're These a people are British. Yeah, you're They're British. British. What the fuck? You know that? You stupid bitch. You can I gotta go, 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 move, bitch. Go, go, go. They're going back and forth at each other. And I'm just seeing all this nonsense happening. I was like, Jesus. What do we, we got ourselves into? You see, sorry. You see one thing about American girls? It's only a few words and it start hitting. Wings mm. is flying. Wings is going left, right, forward. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? All the talk, no, no. All barking, no bite. Let's go. All barking, no bite. No. Bitch, after a few words, you bumped me. Yeah, I bumped you, bitch. What's up? What's up? So then the guy sees the shit that's happening. He clears his entire table. He's like, all right, let's roll. So then everyone leaves. Like his table clears. Why does this babe run? Run after this nigga outside the club. Run. Like, first of all, why are you running after a nigga? Let's start there. Hold on. Let's start there. Hold, Hold on. on. When do we chase? Why when do we literally physically <laughs> after a nigga? Let's start there. <laughs> Secondly, I'm the only one that's catching all this nonsense happening. And I already know. I've seen this bad temper from her. I know she she pops off. I know she, she doesn't fear anything. She, she'll, she'll fight. She'll fight. But her fight is... Mm. So... What the fuck, babe? What the fuck, babe? Right? What the fuck? So we're outside now. It's just me, her, and this nigga. And he's erratic. Like, he smashed a Hennessy bottle. He smashed a gas canister. You know those gas canisters that people inhale? on the floor this guy is huge like football linebacker huge like he will just big body pump you big back big body eating in a big. full cow literally like he would just bust her tump her on top, on top of her head and nothing will happen because he's a big nigga you know what mm -hmm. i mean like girl you'll go flying so i'm like babes calm down please calm mm -hmm. down i'm talking to him please calm down i'm trying to like mediate like because this, now this is a scene. Now people that are leaving the club are gathered around us. It's, it's a very it's, Now it's a circle. It's a, you now know what I mean? Everybody form the circle. Like, what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we're somebodies. People, it's just a quick video and we'll end up on the blogs. I'm so sorry. Like, I'm not even trying to, like, talk crazy. Like, I'm actually trying oh. to be humble. But, like, yeah. people know who we are it's in right. this place. Like, do you Calm get down, it? babes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's not escalate this. So... It turns into now, run me my money, run me my money. And I was like, hmm, what money? What are you talking about? So you giving me money? So you giving me money? So it turned into from her fighting this girl inside the club. She went outside, she didn't even fight the girl anymore. She's fighting the nigga. And she's talking to the nigga saying, run me my money, run me my money. What money? The money is two days ago when we were at this nigga's house, she bought something for all of us to enjoy. She bought a drink for all of us to enjoy. And how much was the money? Tell it us. It was now. like a hundred dollars. Hey. It was like a hundred dollars. Yeah, and, and he said that he would pay her back and he didn't pay her back. So now at the club, when he when she sees him with the next babe, it's run me my money. Run me my money. What's that? What are you stupid? What's are that? You you What's that? Drag her by her week. Girl, She's I was like, mad. huh? So I'm telling him, I'm trying to get her her details so he can send her the money. She now turns the entire thing back on me. What are you doing? You're supposed to be my friend. You're not loyal. Her, You're no, this. wait, come on, come on, come on, come on. We gotta acknowledge Ada's British accent because it is top, 
tier. <laughs> when I tell you this girl's not from London, it's top tier. Bro, my accent's not good. No, You're it's good. Lying. No, it's not good. It's top it tier. It probably sounds good to you because we're no, American. You no, know, like, like, it's top tier. Because I'm like, whoa. Like, even me, I'm like, bitch, are you from London? Like, did I not know something? Something is missing. Lying. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. It's not <laughs> So she flipped the, pretty much off the shirt. She flipped the whole thing on me and was like, you know, you're not loyal. You're not a good friend. You're supposed to be on my side. First of all, I am on your side, bitch. That's why I came outside because I know you're about to do rubbish. <laughs> Secondly, this nigga will tump you outside your head and no one will do anything about it. Like, I'm clearly so on your side. Like, I'm trying to mediate and tone down the situation. But you want to turn up. You want theatrics. You want fireworks. I'm, just, I'm trying to tone it down. I'm your friend so much that I am trying to bring peace but there's one thing i won't do as your friend is condone rubbish mm -hmm. i will never condone rubbish rubbish is rubbish whether you're my friend whether you're my enemy rubbish is rubbish and what you're doing is rubbish absolutely and first of all one you ran after a nigga like literally physically ran after a nigga secondly you're talking about running my money girl why you pay for that shit in the first place that's the number one dumb bitch thing to do <laughs> don't fucking pay for shit and let a nigga say i'll pay you back let somebody be in your account first <laughs> Let somebody money be in your account first, then do whatever the fuck you please. If not, you don't have the money. <laughs> you don't have the money, bro. I don't have it. I don't have it. What you gonna do about yeah. it? Yeah. I don't got the money. The fuck? I don't got the money. Yeah. I don't got the money, daddy. What you gonna do? Yeah. Now, you now, now you're in the club fighting with him, talking about running my money. You're dumb. No. no he scammed you. Yeah, he scammed he you. He scammed you up the cat mm -hmm. and the money. Mm -hmm. Hello, you paid. He's his alcohol. Right. He he cracked them eggs and you paid for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. So, so what happened with her? What happened with So you? yeah, no, no, no. Me or, she got on my face. She got on my face. She got on my face. And everything. She went to tumble. Everything that she could have ever said about me or anything that she ever felt about me came out that night. We were in each other's face like this. We were two seconds. It would have been. <laughs> Two seconds. Two seconds. My next friends inside now finally caught on to what was happening. Had to physically hold me. Hold my arms. Hold her. Carry me into the car. Lock the car. Because me and this girl would have fought outside that club. And <clears throat> to today, it breaks my heart. Because I've never been to that point where I've like fought with a friend. Yeah, 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 or even yeah. like came close to. I'm not a fighter. Like, I really don't like fight. I'm but a bitch want to run. 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 We could we, <laughs> we really could. And we really could have. Yeah. And it's funny, now that um, you know, it's been about a year or so, I, I we ran into her at the club. Yeah, we, we did, we did. We're we did. just looking at each other. So why you know what I, I think is the worst thing is sometimes I, you know, I feel like when you fight a friend, it's really hard to come back from. Yeah. Because why am I physically touching you? I'm so like, happy we, we I'm so happy we didn't because she honestly wouldn't be my enemy. She's not my enemy. Like I, like I respect her. You know, like yeah. I, I did love her, but what she did was shut the freaking mouth, bougie. Like I still have love for her, but what she did was rubbish. And I know that we can never bounce back from that. Like our friendship could like never be normal again. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, um, I feel like first of all, number one, when your friend is trying to stop you from doing rubbish outside. It's one thing if you get mad. It's okay. I feel like I understand that she was upset, but to transfer the aggression at the person you came with is a whole different level of disrespect. Yeah. Because I'm not if I was telling me like, oh, Bessie, um, I don't think you should embarrass yourself like that. I'm not gonna turn around and say, bitch, well fuck you. That's not the last time you ate the last piece of chicken. Literally. Like, why would I and like everyone wanted to be like, oh, she was drunk. No, no drunk. Bullshit. Let me even give you the the gag. The gag. gag me, the next day, gag me, I was leaving. I was traveling. I'm like, all right, I'm out this bitch. I'm moving, right? My next friend I was with us that night, she's like, oh, you should call her. Like, you guys are friends. Like, call her, call her. I was like, fuck that bitch. Kick rocks. I'm done. I don't give a fuck. But the empath in me was like, okay, let me call her. I'm leaving. Let's just see where the friendship lays, right? I call her. And she tells me that, yeah, you know, I just think it was like the heat of the moment and everything that we've ever felt about each other really just like came out. What we felt about each other, bitch. What you felt about, about me. Each other. What? What you felt about me. Right. And on top of that, she already called the nigga. They made up. He sent her her whatever, a hundred fucking dollars back. And they're cool. So you already called the next nigga, and that's why I said decenter fucking men from your life. Because mm -hmm. how you call a fucking nigga, make up with him. You guys just did this. His D must be really good. Bro, after you just did this 
drama embarrassed us. You guys already became good. And you didn't even call me. That's how I know you fucking hate me. That's how I know you're a fucking hater. Yeah. That's how I know we will never fucking be friends. Because let's say you call me. Because it's like, there's no reason for me to be calling you. Like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. I'm not at fault here. You're at fault. Mm-hmm. But that's how, that, that's how you tell a fake friend. You know, okay, so mm-hmm. friends that center, cent, like the whole lives revolve around dick and what dick, what value they get from dick. And um, friends that just, you know, blow up and tell you how they feel off of the most smallest things, off the most smallest misunderstandings. You know, <clears throat> actually, I, this is how I think, this is how I feel like a friend of me, this is what a friend, mm-hmm. friend of me is, in my opinion. A friend of me is someone that, they know something bad happened to you and anytime they call you they try to remind you of that bad thing to hope that in hopes of you being depressed like for example mm-hmm. oh yeah so did you speak to your ex today oh yeah i saw your ex in a club with this girl and she was dancing on him and blah 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 blah, blah. Mm-hmm. they want to see like it's like they're not like girl what you doing i hope you're not girl we're going out mm-hmm. that i feel like a friend of me gets joy in knowing that you're hurt. Mm. Like knowing that something bad has happened to That's you. That's so interesting. I'm so glad you you brought that up actually because I had a recent friend that tried to check me because I didn't update her about her ex. Right? And it was like, yeah, whatever. But it's like, what? You want me to update you and remind you about your trigger? About the person oh. that fucking hurt you? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's people like, are different. Yeah. Why would I do that? Mm-hmm. I mean, she, ex- she... And then when we had the conversation about it, she was just like, well, no, I don't want you to tell me. Blah, blah, blah. But it's just like, okay, babe, then kill. Mm-hmm. Kill. You're right. Yeah, I think, I, personally, me, I think a friend of me is just someone that gets joy in knowing that you're hurt about something. Like, they're not calling to... J- like, all right, for example, right? They know about your breakup. And like, they know that a lot of people know about this particular breakup. And they're like, yeah... Stephanie was like, yeah, he's he's an asshole and you should have never dated him from the beginning. And all right, bitch, the opinion you're telling me is not going to change the fact that I'm heartbroken. Mm. So why are you telling me what other people are telling you? And why? First of all, I feel like personally me, like, I don't know, I'm the type of person that I don't like. It's, it's one thing when you're gossiping with your friend, like, you, you know, old girls, we gossip. It's one thing to be like, oh yeah, I saw my, I saw your ex. Like, let's say it passed and you healed. And you're like, oh yeah, I saw your ex with, he was with some ugly ass girl. She mm-hmm. had holding her mm-hmm. shoe. Her heels were ashy. Her mm-hmm. ankles was ashy. Her weave was bad. Girl, he did not upgrade. He mm-hmm. downgrade. It's mm-hmm. one of those like you're boosting your friend to let her know that, bitch, you were the baddest bitch he could ever mm-hmm. deal with. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing to be like, yeah, I saw him with, um, what you call it? How you feel about that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like how you, you feel, feel about, about that? that for real? Like how you feel about that? If you ask me how I feel about that, bitch. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like sometimes a friend, will, like don't get me wrong. Sometimes your friend is only telling you just to gossip to make you laugh. But it's like, how are you delivering the message? Because Ooh. delivery is important. If you're like, oh, I saw him with some raggedy ass bitch. Her wig was all messed mm-hmm. up. She, bitch, she wasn't even top mm-hmm. two. Mm-hmm. She's not even top six. Mm-hmm. She's not even top. Nine. <laughs> that bitch is that bitch is a bottom feeder. You know when you don't get your feet done for a long time and your heel is like really hard. That's what that bitch is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how that's how you supposed I'm to ginger crying. your friend. That's how you ginger your friend. You get what I'm saying? So mm. I feel like when a friend's like, yeah, I saw him with the girl. She was wearing some nice designer bag. Mm-hmm. She was wearing a Chanel bag mm-hmm. and she was wearing and she looked well moisturized. Mm-hmm. It's like, why are you telling me that, bitch? You know I'm just healing from that nigga. You mm. know that's the same bitch that he cheated on me with. Mm. That's what I think is in front of me. Mm. You, you're, you're happy to hear that I'm not happy. <clears throat> like, you know I'm heartbroken and you're only calling me on FaceTime. You're not calling me to uplift me and say, bitch, we're going out. Fuck mm-hmm. what? you like, bitch, why are you all... You're not even like, bitch, why are all the lights off? Mm-hmm. First of all, bitch, are you in hell? Why are all the lights off? Bitch, not are you in hell. <laughs> are you in hell? Turn the lights on. We, let me see your face. <laughs> Are you crying? Don't fucking kill me. <laughs> Don't fucking kill me. Are you in hell? <laughs> no, because, no, for real. If you think about it, if, like, I start to, like, I don't know what made me come up on this, like, mm-hmm. revelation. Mm-hmm. But it just made me feel like, you know what? Sometimes you think the people that really want the best for you, that be like, oh, I'm just telling you what this person said about you. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck are you telling me? It's not going to change my fucking situation. Mm-hmm. Like, you telling me that this person had this opinion about this particular situation. And you're t- and, and mind you, this is how I really, this is, it's touching me, it's touching home for me. This is how you know it's a friend of me because, let's say, for example, 
the breakup didn't break you and you're still happy and you're like all in a good mood and it is all of a sudden like oh yeah but um this person stephanie said bitch we don't even talk about the breakup we're talking mm -hmm. about hot dogs and bread mm -hmm. why the fuck are you bringing the breakup mm -hmm. i ain't thinking about that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To me, that's how you know it's a friend of mine. Mm. So what's your take? That is another great point. That is another great point. And I think ultimately it just boils down to people who don't want to see the best for you, people that don't want to see you happy. I think ultimately all the examples that we've brought up, it just boils down to people who are just like not happy, jealous, mm -hmm. and are not considerate of your feelings and put their own put their own whether it be entertainment mm -hmm. or their own just happiness or priorities above yours yeah. and i feel like in any sort of relationship there's a level of like selflessness that you have to have in order mm -hmm. to like like maintain it you know yeah, like yeah yeah ultimately that's what love is it's selflessness mm -hmm. true even in dating a man and dating, a woman. Dating, friendship, whatever. It, yeah. it all boils down to selflessness. So, um, yeah. And you know one thing that I... I'm going to say this. Because you guys know I'm very transparent. I've already, talked about, I've already told you guys about the situation. One thing that I like, I love about Ada is this. I could tell her something terrible. She's not going to... We talk about it for like maybe like five minutes. Then we'd be like... <laughs> then we'd be like, all right, bitch. So... <laughs> Like she's not like I don't think like one, I, I'm not even gonna say I don't think she doesn't remind me of something like oh well okay let's say she knows I'm happy like I'm just like I'm in a good mood she's not gonna be like oh well so how are you feeling bitch you know how I'm feeling she she can tell by looking at me and by the tone of my voice that I'm okay if I wasn't okay she would know like you don't sound okay but she's not going to like this is what I've noticed about her and I, I I don't like to compare individuals but I've noticed about her and other people that. Like, I could be in a happy mood, and they'll be like, oh, so how you feeling about um, X, Y, Z? I'm not talking about X, Y, and Z right now. I'm talking about ABC. And you can see I'm happy. So don't ask me how I'm feeling about that, because I'm already in a good mood. Mm -hmm. She doesn't do that. She'll be like, oh, you're on ABC? I bet. We about to go to Z. So we about to go to the beach house. <laughs> we about to go to Miami. We about to go. <laughs> you know, you want to go? You want to go far? I'm going to take you to space, mm -hmm. bitch. I'm going to take you to the galaxy, you know, bitch. Pluto. We going to Pluto, bitch. We might Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Now we're gonna stay on level earth. How you feeling? Mm -mm. You get what I'm saying? So that's but you know what I feel like sometimes people use that as like a way to like establish closeness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like maybe they're, they're trying to like mm -hmm. let me like show how grounded and down to earth. Like let's talk about something serious. Like of mm -hmm. course when it's time to talk about stuff serious, like we're talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. serious. You know what I mean? Like Oh, that's another way to look at it you know too. I mean? Like some people want to feel that closeness. Yeah, like, like yeah. Like maybe this is how like we're going to bond mm -hmm. type of thing. But like if it's like a continuous thing where you want to bond over my misery, fuck you bitch. Fuck you bitch. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck no, you. that's actually yeah. no cheers. Mm -hmm. Hello. No, that's actually true. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't think of it like that. That's why it's always good to have a different perspective. perspective. Yeah. I mean, life is about perspectives. There was like one day like this, Sojourner, my best friend. <clears throat> I, I don't even, you know what? Let you me tell you I, no, oh. no. I botch names ridiculously. Like, <laughs> ridiculously. Like, her name, she said her name correctly. I'd be like, Saji. <laughs> How did Saji come from that particular name she said? But, she accepts it. Like, if I'm like, Saji, she's like, hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she does. She really does. She's like, I, a, she's like, Ava doesn't know. It's okay. She doesn't know. She's, she just, it's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> there was one day like this. We were taking a jog. Uh, it was like a city jog thing, mm -hmm. like a, a jog, a running club that we joined right there. Sorry to cut you off. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this about her best friend, right? Mm -hmm. One thing I love, like, she's probably, like, the one person I've ever met in this life Like I can have deep conversations with. When I say deep conversations, I'm talking about, like, not, like, dating. I'm talking about, like, yeah, the first whale was in a 900 BC. She's like, yeah, because the whale was such and such. And I'm like, yeah, you know, and, and it evolved from a frog. Right. <laughs> Go, like we be, yeah. it's like we're on shrooms. Like we can yeah. go deep, deep, deep. So mm -hmm. that's one thing I love about her best friend. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, we were on a run, and she—I can't remember exactly what we were talking about—but she gave me the seed 
of perspective. Mm -hmm. And from that day, I've never lost sight of that word perspective. Everything in this life is perspective. You could always change the timeline. Tell me the movie, tell me the movie, put me on the Everything, place. everywhere, all at once. Go watch it, come back to me, thank me later. You could always jump timelines, you could always change the direction, the course in which your life is going. You are the author of your book, you are the writer of your book. You are the main motherfucking character of your book. So you do whatever you want at any point. If you don't like where the story's going, change it. It's simple. And it's all about perspective. Right now, it could seem really dark. It could seem like everything is like imploding in and it's going wrong and it's just tribulation after tribulation after tribulation. But it doesn't have to be like that. You could, you could see the tribulations as, okay, these are lessons that God, universe source is giving to me mm -hmm. because i need to shift course that's exactly what happened to me you guys know the traumatic <coughs> experience that happened exactly what happened to me i can relate shift, to what you're saying go you, ahead you need to shift course and it just takes you to be like present and really like be in tune with yourself and meditate and pray and and have that like isolation whether it be prayer, fasting, meditation, whatever it is that gets you into that zone where you could completely focus on yourself and just yourself and no one else and nothing else, do it. Listen, switch it up for the plot. That's what people say, right? Mm -hmm. For the plot or like for the top, for the story. I don't even know what everyone's saying now, but like just you, you guys are always coming up with new stuff. Anyways. Yeah, just switch it up because it doesn't have to be what you're experiencing. I want to tap into what she said. Um, she actually, okay, so... I never shared this with you guys, and I want to tell you guys now. I'm actually pretty hard on myself, so that's why sometimes when I say certain things to you guys, especially about dating or your, or self-development, I'm very, like, kind of, like, straightforward, cutthroat, because I'm like that with myself. And I think that God... I, you guys know a traumatic experience happened to me, like, February, like, the second month of the new year. And I think that God deliberately allowed our doubt to come back into my life. And it's not like come back into my life because it's not like she left anyway, but just like physically be here at this particular point in my life because she introduced me to the movie. Everything, everywhere, all at once. And because I was so hard on myself and she was like, you know what? Watch this movie and just like, I think we were, at, we, we were for brunch and we were at brunch for like four hours, five hours, just literally like eating each other's brain alive, like just talking, <laughs> talking. And after I watched that movie, because she had made a statement, it's like, I could be a rock. And I was like, what? Bitch, what do you mean you could be a rock? <laughs> I was like, what, the, what does that mean? Like, I didn't understand. She was like, when you watch the movie, you're going to understand. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. So I went on YouTube. I rented the movie. When I tell you, I was boo-hoo crying. Boo-hoo crying, watching the movie. I, <laughs> snot coming out my nose and everything. And the movie brought a lot of clarity to me and a lot of experiences, a lot of, like, different events in my life. And I'm very thankful for that. I want to tell you that. Because it made me have, like, a 360 healing moment to really understand that, you know what? I'm taking life so serious, but at the end of the day, the day going to end. At the end of the day, <laughs> the day go end. Enough of that. Yeah. At the end of the day... The day gone and period. It's like, like you know, when you think about, all right, for example, some I, I know some of you may be listening to this at a particular time in your life, whether it be heartbreak, you lost your job, you don't have enough money, and you're like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? One thing that I realized about life and what the movie kind of, like, made me reflect on is that no matter what, everything solves itself, and it's all in your mind. You mentioned you can switch. I could be a rock today. I could be a piece of paper. I could be a sausage. <laughs> I could be a hot dog. I could be a dog. I could be a pet to somebody else. I could be Jeff Bezos. Facts. It's all, you know, I think that it sounds so, it sounds so cliche. And it sounds so far-fetched, too, to, like, believe. But just think about where you were five years ago. Think about where you were as a child. Right. The life that you lived then. Yeah. To yeah. the life that you are in right now, what you're experiencing, the people around you, your reality, your job. Your day to day, your interests, and things you, you said you would never, never do. do. Some of you are sniffing coke now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't judge. I don't judge. You know what? It's funny because as we're talking about this, I'm having a revelation of, all right, this is so true. That movie is so true, and everything you're saying is so true. Because let me tell you, when I was like 
when I was, you guys know my whole experience of my last relationship of dating a narcissist to being married to a narcissistic man. It's so funny. On my birthday, I was literally thinking, your life can go two ways, bitch. You're going to be a housewife in jail or you're going to take the red pill and you don't know where it's going to land you. And I was like, you know what? Sometimes you got to take the red pill because now if I didn't take the red pill, I wouldn't meet Ada. I wouldn't have the things I have now because I would have been comfortable. And that's, Settled. that's the, I think that's what. And that too is, yeah. is okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. For that circumstance and that mindset mm-hmm. and frame in which you were at, that was your reality mm-hmm. in that period. But like you said, you took the motherfucking red pill. We move. We move. We move. We move. We move. We move. We're not there no more. We're on the next yeah field. the point on the next level right the point yeah. was again you can change you mentioned something about you can literally change your frequencies all in your mind and all about decisions every decision that we make leads us up to today, today. Yes. yeah mm-hmm. down to i'm taking another sip of this glass do you the like sip it? of this glass will now determine and, the litmus yeah, of <laughs> not determine my actions don't kill me uh, <laughs> No, because we two answers you. No, you gotta tell them your review. Now that you've been having the Red Bull and American This is juice. This is juice. I have Pilates in the morning. I'm about to wake up. This is juice. It doesn't taste like alcohol. But how are you feeling? Like let us know how you let us know I'm how I'm feeling you... like real happy. I'm 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 feeling euphoric. I'm not feeling Thank like, you. You know, like when you drink a lot of alcohol, like, I don't know, my face sometimes just feels like heavy. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. You know, yes. it's like, ugh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. drunk. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no, like, I feel like. That's like, what I be telling you. Right, that's what I'm telling you. Like, listen. <laughs> listen, no, that's what it is. Like, no, listen, Wild Turkey, I've been marketing. I need you guys to sponsor. Uh, it's, no, it's not just all Wild Turkey. It has to be American honey because this is literally made for women. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is like the women is whiskey. This whiskey. Yeah, it's whiskey. It's you know whiskey is usually her like mm. her. This is like women whiskey. This is the Moscato. Thank. There we go. There we go. Okay. Couldn't have been better said. This Could is This is the porn star martini. Bow, bow, bow. But 2024, please, no bellies. We, 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 we trying to be outside. <laughs> we trying to be outside. Any last words, Ada, before we um, wrap up this episode? I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Some final words or advice you can give the girls that you, you've experienced so far? Mm-hmm. Even the litness. Like, you'd be like, bitch, I'm lit because I met, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, what's something you could give the girls? I'd be like, oh, nah. You need to hear this. Like, I, need to hear I, would, I would say, like, my biggest, like, recent lesson being a young woman is decentering men. Fuck them. But not, like, fuck them, like, you know, fuck them, but, like, just, like, focus on yourself, babe. Like, yeah. point to yourself, love on yourself, be kind to yourself. Yeah. You know? She taught me how to be kind. Be kind to yourself. Mm-hmm. Take care of yourself in every way, shape, or form. Physically, mentally, mm-hmm. spiritually, financially, take care of yourself. Everything else will pour into you. Once you get into that routine and all that is correct, mm-hmm. everything else will come, 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 come. You don't have to worry about a thing. Um, yeah, just the center man is my friggin' motto. What do you mean? Okay, so let's say I'm slow. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it means to descend to t- mm-hmm. with the to decenter men. Decenter men. Sorry, I'm a little tipsy. Do you decenter know men. What it, like? What, what is? How do? How would I? How would I decenter myself from men? Because I'm just so demonized. I'm so men move oriented. Oriented. Moved by men. Yeah, driven. Stop caring about the opinions of men. Stop caring if they think you are skinny, fat, thick. Beautiful, not beautiful. Your nails are done. Your nails are not done. Your hair is done. Your hair is not done. You yourself have to want that for yourself. You yourself have to carry that standard. Not because a man told you that this is the standard or whatever perception that he expects or that he's projecting onto you. If that's your thing, not to have anything done, fine. Let it be that. If that's your thing to have everything done, fine. Let it be that, but not let it be dictated Based off of what a man told you, or just projecting on exactly. You. So that's one example of stop of decentralizing men. Make everything, every decision, 
every thought, every word that you speak be on your own volition, be on your own accord, not because a man told you this is how you're supposed to carry yourself, but this is how you're supposed to be. Second way to dissenter men is stop talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guess yeah. Like, yeah. We're it's talk about that. <laughs> but like with your girlfriends, like yeah. talk about babe, my belly's big. <laughs> talk about oh I found this new hairstyle. I wanna do that. <laughs> talk about this is how I'm investing my money in crypto. And there's a bull run coming up. Lucky No Anything else but a bull run. Talk about that, how about that? Yeah, that's another way you can discover. Cheers! Because men are bad, though. Not because I don't like men, mm-hmm. I love men. But, but you just need to know how to. Like. You know, you're mad funny because every time a whole bunch of girls go out to eat, it just somehow goes to men. You know what? Do a challenge. The first person to open their mouth and be like, this man. You're paying the bill. You're paying, yeah. you're, you're paying the you're paying, bill. You're paying for the honey. They're paying for the honey, you're paying for the food, you're paying for the whole outing for the whole night. Mm-hmm. That's the only way to make women stop talking about men. When it concerns, when it's a, it concerns our pocket, that's the only way. But like, you know what I'm not talking about, man. I don't want to talk about it mm-hmm. because I feel like that's the only thing that I feel like. You, yeah, you know what's funny? Mm-hmm. As you said that, I think that that's the only thing that women feel like they have in common. Mm. That is true because that is always like a point of topic. Once you like catch up with your girl, oh yeah, like even today I was on the phone with my girl. Back home, and she was like, she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. So we're obviously talking about her, her situation. What we're talking about? We're like, oh, no update. I don't have a man. I don't have. A, I don't even have a. Man. Because I'm, I, like, I'm outside of myself. Mm-hmm. When you speak to me on the phone, am I like men driven? Like, do I talk about men, like men or my no, man? No, we don't even talk about. Everything. You know, yo, we don't like even, the way you no. tune in and tune out of your relationship. No, you like, yeah, 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 yeah. and I feel like you just do that because you feel like you need to just put it out there, but like you just. Close it off immediately. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm cold this da 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 and then yeah. yeah. So what's up girl? Where are we going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No, that's actually really true. No, you're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. Like you even just did it when we were setting up the camera when you told me about Yeah, like, the situation. Yeah. Oh and I was like, oh okay. Like I was like getting excited. I was trying to like talk about it and then you just like close it right off. Yeah. Yeah. She ain't lying. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Stop talking. You see, off camera, it may feel like because I'm always talking about it, but off camera, literally, I don't want to talk about men. I want to be my girls. I want to do bad stuff. I want to be yeah, bad girls. Like, you know, yeah. I'm not like, oh my God, she's talking about her man. Like, yeah, no, it's not. But I'm, I know what you mean. Like, overly, like, yeah, my man just did this. Or I just don't. I feel like it's just straining. Like, no, what, 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 what's going on? It's just like, oh, we want to go do the. Have to check with. Just because. You're married or your fiance does not mean you cannot have fun with your friends. Mm-hmm. I think that a lot of times, like, what, and this is so important. I, I must say this because it's going to resonate with somebody. This is why married men usually have more fun than married women. Mm-hmm. Because married w- men understand the that. The show doesn't end. The show ain't never stopped. It's, it's it doesn't sh- because they're married they don't stop because they're married they still have fun yes because understand that marriage is like a contract it's like, i don't want to say it's a contract but it's like you understand that i accept this person for all their flaws but we have a bigger picture like we're going to build a family we're going to build a business this is the idea this is the person that i see that is fit for this type of agenda that i have for my life the problem with married women is they make their marriage the center of their life. They don't know how to understand. Their identity. Their identity. They don't know how to say, okay, you know what? I'm married, but just because I'm married doesn't mean I can't have fun with my friends. And it's not necessarily about cheating. Mm -hmm. It's more so about, I want to be with my friends too. Like, just because my friends are not married doesn't mean I got to judge them. Like, oh, you know this? Mm -hmm. Women that are married that are very judgmental. Higher than thou. (laughs) Oh, they're not married, so I can't. No, bitch. I don't care. Listen. I'm going to tell you this right now. This is how, this is why most women end up divorced or end up unhappy in their marriage. Because they centralize their husband. Even in marriage, decentralized men. Thank you. Keep your identity. You don't have to lose your friends that are not married. You don't have... This is why married men... You know, it's funny because married men tend to be more happier than married women. Keep your identity. 
if your friend is like, yo, let's go out, you'd be like, all right, um, babes, I'm going out. Mm-hmm. Don't be like, oh, well, I can't go out with her because she's not married and she doesn't have. Can you believe, I have, side note, I had a friend that I had brunch with recently told me that, like, she just wants to be married and she just wants to have the baby because she feels like she gets more respect once she has that title. Because of what? What do you mean? She gets she has more respect as far as what? Like society will respect her and take her more seriously. Okay, what about the husband that that will still go out to the club and still be toasting? I mean, the husband too. Like for men and women, like once you're in a marriage, oh. you're, you're deemed as like more responsible. And funny enough, is it's it's true. Mm-hmm. When you're married, you seem to be more. Like, it's like people want to do business with you mm-hmm. more. And I realized that that's the reason why most men get married because they know that they're more, rel- they're like more trustworthy. It's social currency. There we go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right about that. I feel like when you're unmarried and you have a kid, it's kind of like that. Like, you're just you're a baby mom. Yeah, yeah, you're a baby mom. Like, yeah. why would you even give a man that opportunity to come in you and you don't have a kid? You don't have a ring. Mm-hmm. That's true to a certain extent. What's your take on having a kid outside of marriage? Personally, it's not for me. I don't want that for myself. I think it's... I think it's because of the way I was raised. Like, super, super Christian, super church. Please, before we we proceed with her mm-hmm. perspective, she's an evil girl. So if, you, if you're even thinking in your mind that I don't want to marry her, but I want to give a baby, you must come with the money first. So, okay, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, it's just not what I want for myself. And also just growing up for part of my life in a single parent household, I know the effects of just like yeah. single household is, you know? And that's not what I would want for my children. Not that I think there's anything wrong with me or that I'm, mm-hmm. or anyone is like wrong or fucked up in any sort of way just because they grew up with a single parent. Um, not what I'd want for myself. I don't judge anyone who does choose to do that. I just personally know the effects of it and I just know that's not the most like conducive environment for any child. Like I do believe and, and don't get me wrong, like yes you could co parent and coexist and co everything mm-hmm. to the best of your abilities even yeah. if you have like a healthy relationship. But there's something so deeply rooted and important about a family unit in my perspective that I value and that's just what I would want. So for my girlies who are don't have that, um, get that. And it yeah. doesn't have to be with the father of your child. Like mm-hmm. just a family unit and a healthy mm-hmm. man. Like Sierra. Sierra. Thank you. That's like the most beautiful example. And to be honest with you, I can really relate to having the father figure and not having a father figure. Because when I was like up to 11, I had my father figure. Like I know what it feels like to have both parents in the household and being a single family household. And it does have a lot of effect on you and the individual as much as you try not to admit it does because... It's like seeing both genders. Like, you know, your father can be stern. Your mother can be soft. Your mom can tell you no. You, you be like, Mom, can I have $20? Your, fa- your mom can tell you no, but you collecting $20 from your father. But imagine only having one mom, like only one single. Now, it could be, let's say, your father that's raising you or your mom that's raising you. And let's say you, you want to have $20. Now, if you have both parents in the household, you can have $40. That part. But if it's only mm-hmm. one, if they say no, it's no. That part. No, to be honest, when you know I was in a single parent household, um, I would collect twenty dollars from my mom and collect twenty dollars from my dad. Cause they're not talking. They're not so right. <laughs> Facts. They're not talking. Okay. I, was, uh, I, I, I would leave my mom's house like I'm staying at my dad's. I I I tell my dad I'm, I'm stay at my mom's. I'm staying elsewhere. They both don't know where I'm at. I'm outside. Right. So let me ask you a question. Because this is an argument and. After this, we're probably going to, like, end this because we don't want to give you guys too much. We want you guys to, like, want more. Mm-hmm. What, what is the difference between, what is the difference you would say between growing up with your father and growing up with your mother? Because a lot of people, sorry to cut you off, a lot of people would say, oh, growing up, with the, the daughters need their fathers, blah, 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 they need this. What would you personally say as you being able to 
bounce between the two. What's the difference between growing up with your dad and your mom? Let's get into it. Night and day. I think my situation is quite different. I definitely have a much more healthier, more positive relationship with my mother. It's my mm-hmm. best friend. That's my girls. That's gay. You know, I'm, I have a good relationship with my father, but I'm definitely much more closer with my mother. My father was very present. He was very there. He was he love was, that. He was there financially. Mm-hmm. You know, he provided. as every evil there, man. There was no lack of provision. As every evil man. Emotionally, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. questionable. Yeah, but. He was there. He supported me. Anything Financially, do, yeah. You know, I did it. Which is you a know, man's duty. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's also, too, where I get my foundation of understanding of, like, what a man is. Like, mm. also, it's provision for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so... It definitely was not a day. If I, if I was with my if I was with my dad, it would it would be like, okay, we need food. Oh yeah, here's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My mom was like, oh, you need food? Okay, baby, let me, let's cook together. And yeah. Oh, I, mean, I love that. So that was kind of like yeah. the difference for me. I love that. Ultimately, I love both my parents. I have like I'm now as I'm like older, my relationship with my parents is like so much more like fruitful mm-hmm. you know like i'm an adult now we're able to like understand and relate on mm-hmm. so many different things now it's not so much like parent child mm-hmm. it's not like that dynamic anymore it's like now like i'm an adult and i know what you're mm-hmm. going through and i can understand mm-hmm. yeah. so i love um, that for me my situation is different everyone has their own situation you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's just like i can't really like speak on that too much mm-hmm. but definitely if i just grew up in my father's house like it would have been more finance like, more transactional yeah 100 mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's what it that's, i feel like that's what people don't understand why and i think that it ties into what you were saying with that healthy foundation of having a family because you need both in the, mm-hmm. the household you need that structure because that man will bring that financial structure but you also need that emotional support mm-hmm. like oh let's cook together Mm-hmm. Because it's like I don't want to do it by myself too. Like yeah, you know now that we're grown, we're like all right. I want to do it myself, mom. I don't want. I don't need my parent. But then when you're growing up, you still need that emotion, <laughs> and that's what we women bring mm-hmm. that emotional support. Like mm-hmm. no, I want to spend time with you. Mm-hmm. Like let's do it together. Yeah. That's also my mom too. Like it's like mm-hmm. no, let's let's do yeah. this together. And yeah. it's like at first I'm like no, no, no. No, my mom always be dragging me out. She wants to go on a walk. She wants to go to Walmart. She I love to to- that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, like it's like the most <laughs> mundane things that like she wants to do with me. Mm-hmm. But it's just like we're getting older and our parents are getting older as well. Mm, so like, you gotta appreci- you have to appreciate. Yeah, I just like, said that to me. All, all those small yeah and time that mm-hmm. you have to spend with your parents, like try and take advantage of that. Yeah, I I just said that to me because my mom is actually in town and my and Ada was like, no, like and you're gonna be happy. Enjoy that. Mm-hmm. She didn't invite me out. She didn't say. She didn't try to like. Oh no, let's go out. She she left me alone. She was like, no, you need to be with your mom because yeah. these little moments. Mm-hmm. And you know what's so funny? I'm so thankful because mm-hmm. funny enough is, like those little car drives. Those little mm-hmm. oh oh mom, how do you do this? Even mm-hmm. though I know how to do it, mm-hmm. it still feels mm-hmm. like no. I love that. Mm-hmm. No, I love that. It's so yeah. true. It's so true. I told you my last words. Decenter men. Yes. Level the fuck up. In whatever way that is, whether it be press on nails, whether it be gel, UV, uh, painting your nails yourself and waiting that. for them to dry for one hour. No, whatever it is, level the fuck up. Take care of yourself, point to yourself, love on yourself, be kind to yourself, pray, meditate, thank God, thank universe, thank source. And watch the movie. And watch everything everywhere all at once. And guys, we're going to leave you guys with that. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you're listening from, thank you for listening. And you guys already know the rest. Until we meet again.